We're coming down from back-to-back -back solar storms that brought us some gorgeous aurora views over the past couple days, and we've got some new regions on the sun's far side that have been firing big solar flares, and they could be solar storm producers. The stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. Space weather this week calms down a little bit compared to last week. We have been dealing with some solar storms. One of them was launched on the 23rd. It was a northward pointing filament. The next one is here on the 26th. You can see the ribbons opening up like that. That was a filament that launched to the south of Earth. Both of these were expected to be glancing blows and not really give us all that much, but they actually had some sustained southward fields in them and they were moving really, really slowly. So it made Earth kind of bathe in this aurora generating stuff for several days and gave us actually some pretty good shows. Outside of that, however, we really haven't been having all that much activity. We've been watching region 3796, 3799, and 3800. They've been giving us some low-level M-class flares at R1 level radio blackouts, but believe it or not, they've been more bark than bite. We haven't had all that much from them. On top of that, we've been watching region 3806. This region has been busy on the sun far side giving us big solar flares. In fact, as it started to rotate into Earth view on the 28th, it fires off a beautiful solar storm launch. However, it's not Earth directed, but it does look like this region could be giving us more activity as, and so we're going to be watching it as it rotates into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. Now, on top of that, region 3807 is growing quite quickly. You can see it right here. Hasn't been giving us any really big flares yet, but we are are watching it because it is in the Earth strike zone right now. On top of that, we've had a little bit of a solar storm launch from this region in here, but not all that much going on. The big story really are some regions on the sun's far side. Here is an M, a near M4 class flare from one of those regions. We'll talk about that more in a minute. That's a returning region. And on top of that, we've had some another, here's a near M2 class flare. This is once again from the Styx instrument on Solar Orbiter that's looking at the sun's far side. This is coming from a region that's in the north. In fact, as we take a look at the flare locations on the sun's far side from the Styx instrument, you can see here, this is the region that was giving us the near M4 class flare. Here's one that was giving us the near M2 class flare. These two regions are about to rotate into Earth view. So they're just out of view on the Earth's east limb, just behind the east limb. They'll be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days, and we'll talk more about them in a minute because they could be big solar flare producers and big solar storm producers. Now, switching to our full sun map, we take a look at SDO AIA imagery in red, which shows us the front side of the sun, and we're seeing uh, solar orbiter EUI imagery, which shows us all the active regions that are lurking on the sun's far side. And as we set this in motion, you can see regions 3796, 3799, and region 3800 to kind of get you calibrated as to where you are uh, compared to the west limb and the east limb in Earth view. But as we take a look, at the sun's far side, you can see region 3806 that's rotating into Earth view here right now, along with old region 3780. That becomes region 3808 and could also give us some big uh, solar storms and possibly solar flares because this region has been a big player uh, over the last rotation or so, as well as region 3786. And believe it or not, this is the region that has been firing off those big M4 class flare on the sun's far side. Also, on top of that, we look at region 3784. It sure looks like it's busy, as well as look at these two new regions have been growing over the last few days on the sun's far side. These regions are going to be all rotating into Earth view here over the next two or three days, and that means we definitely have potential for big solar flares from one, two, three, possibly four regions over the next couple days. So solar storms and big solar flares, including maybe up to R2 level radio blackouts are back on the menu. So amateur radio operators, get ready. Things could get a lot noisier on the bands in the next couple days. 
Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase with the new moon being on the 3rd. And by the 7th, the moon should be about 17% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, you have one more chance to say goodbye to the Perseids with this new moon before they disappear for this year. And then after that, you do have a chance to catch the Orionids, but the Orionids will likely peak closer to a full moon. So it may be hard to see them this year. You may in fact have to wait for the Taurids and they'll start becoming a bigger deal in and around late October. So you may have to wait till then to catch some good fireballs. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are settling down from that those couple solar storms which have been giving us some aurora over the past few days, but we are dealing with some fast solar wind that could be peaking up here over the next couple days. So at high latitudes, Noah's expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have an aurora watch because we could have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm over the next day or two as things begin to do you deal with this pocket of fast solar wind but then things should be settling down by the third and we will be going back to reasonably quiet conditions unless of course we get one of those solar storms hitting us from all of these uh, potential filament launches and solar storm launches because i've got a pretty busy sun right now now as we switch to our mid latitudes well we are still expecting unsettled conditions and we do have a wind watch but likely this pocket of fast solar wind is not going to give us all that much down at mid latitudes we're going to give us about a 25 percent chance for active conditions so eh, maybe if you're dedicated could you could chase some aurora but that's not going to last very long it's likely going to be pretty quiet by the second and into the third things should stay reasonably quiet unless we get a new solar storm launch and now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout out over the coming week, we are dealing with a lot of active regions in EarthView and more that are going to be rotating into EarthView over this coming week. So solar flux is sitting at about 230s right now, but it could rise up to possibly 250s by the end of the week. This is a moderate noise range. Uh, NOAA is giving us about a 60% chance for M-class flares. This is at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and that may climb just a little bit over the course of this week as again we've got maybe four new regions that seem to be pretty flare active on the sun's far side as they begin to rotate into view i'm kind of staying a little bit conservative and keeping it at about 65 percent but i do believe that uh, we could see definitely more solar flares including a higher chance of x-class flares but maybe not too much noah's giving us about a 10 percent chance of uh, r3 level radio blackout over the next couple days and i'll bump that up to about a 15 percent chance so we shall see. Just expect that the noise on the bands will continue to stay in the moderate range, likely not in the severe range, but we will watch that over this coming week and let you know if anything changes. Now, switching to our solar uh, radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are sitting at the D1 normal range right now. Everything is in the green. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. This is also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. We do have quite a few active regions in Earth view, and some of them are big flare players, but it sure doesn't look like any of them are big radiation storm producers. So NOAA's giving us only about a 10% chance of an S1 to S2 level radiation storm over the next few days and I'm going to keep that out through the five day because it really doesn't look like we have any big players that are going to be threatening for radiation storm risks so for the most part all of you frequent flyers and this does include air crew and uh, the prenatal passengers and high-risk passengers it looks like you're pretty much in the clear but definitely keep on top of those IKO advisories because things could change quite quickly. So the space weather this week is calming down just a little bit compared to last week. Now we do have a pocket of fast solar wind that's going to be hitting us. And considering we do have Earth still trying to wind down from the solar storms it's been dealing with over the last couple days, well, that might give aurora photographers at high latitudes a bit of a show. But if you're a aurora photographer at mid latitudes, well, you might want to sit this one out because we're not expecting it to last all that long. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this past 
last week hasn't been all that bad for you. You've been getting R1 level radio blackouts that have been reasonably short lived and not too much noise on the bands, but you might notice the noise rise begin to rise on the dayside radio bands again as these new regions rotate into Earth view over the next couple days. We also could be getting R2 level radio blackouts and longer duration radio blackouts as well. So you're just going to have to deal with this over the next week as these regions rotate across the Earth facing disk and hopefully it won't be too bad. And now you GPS users, well, it's kind of a trade-off. On Earth's night side, things should be getting better because the solar storms are dying down and the aurora is dimming out, so your reception should be better on overall on the Earth's night side. But on the day side, we're getting more radio noise with these new big flare players rotating into Earth view, so that might make things a little bit tougher for you, especially near dawn and near dusk, so make sure you stay vigilant. And overall, your reception should be meh. Okay. I'm Tamara the Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.